So, this is a, not a product placement. Let's get that hidden out of the film. All right. Jesus. All right. This is a 1990-ish 20 horsepower powerhead. Uh, heavy salt water use, and naturally we have two broken screws down here at the bottom. Now, usually what you do is, well, there's a lot of different ways to try it. One is to weld the nut onto it and then pull the nut off. Another one would be to use a, um, you know, a pipe wrench or some vice grips, grab onto the stud here, try to back it off. I don't think either one of those are going to work. I was able to get one of these two out by doing the whole weld the nut to it, but it it barely worked and it didn't work on this one. I think I tried that one. I'm not sure. Either way, it's it didn't work. They're too stuck. So our only option now is to drill them out. Uh, the problem with drilling them out and retapping them is when you have your center punch and you know you put it on there as centered as you can get it, tap it and drill it. You never quite get it quite quite in the center. So I'm going to try to make a little fixture that I can put in there that'll guide me into the center. Now most of the time you can just use a drill press and get in there and do it. Like let's say on this power head. It has a flat surface on the back here that is parallel to the top. So if you're trying to drill out the um, the cylinder head bolts here, it's a piece of cake. You put in the drill press, everything's fine. The problem comes when you're trying to do anything on the bottom because you can't really put it upside down because you don't have any flat surfaces. So you need to use kind of a hand drill, and good luck keeping that straight. All right, I have a little uh, piece of hex aluminum here that I'm going to uh, use for this. I would have preferred steel, but I don't have any steel, and I don't know if this is, little experiment's going to work anyway, so I'm not going to buy some steel. So I'm just going to use the aluminum. I'm going to cut it down to about an inch. So what I want to do here is use this to make a drill guide. I want to put a hole through it, and then be able to screw this on to my broken stud, and then use the center hole to guide my drill bit into the center of that hole and straight. Now according to McMaster, to tap a quarter inch hole we need a number five drill bit. So we can't use a number five because we won't be able to thread this onto our stud because the holes become so thin it'll just fall off the stud before it makes its way into the block. So need something smaller than number five. So I have a 764 in here plan is to drill a hole through that and then that'll be kind of my starter hole. So you may think to yourself now, well yes but that part needs to be perfectly flat along with this you need it nice and straight. Well my friends you don't really. The only thing you care about being straight is your center hole. So if this is off a little bit of my vise and it comes a little sideways it's really not going to matter because the only thing that matters is the uh, the hole going through the center which the drill bit should keep it straight. So I kind of found center of this, even though you don't really need it. I kind of found center. So let's uh, drill it and see how it goes. I'm going to get the hole started. I'm just spinning it by hand. And I'll fire it up and drill it the whole way. Now I'm going to swap my drill bit out for number five. And that looks like it's spinning true. So what I'm going to do here is pull it down to where it hits the hole. Now I don't want to go all the way through to number five, I'm only about halfway through just to thread it on. So I'm going to use my depth gauge here. And I think half inch will work. Half inch. So we're right there. So the drill bit is touching the part. So that's how deep I want to go into the hole. So that is where I will set my stop. And we have half inch. So now I just drill it. So now we have a 764 on one side and a number 5 on the other. Now let's use our quarter 20 tap. Tap a quarter 20 threads on the bottom of this. I 
think I've hit the bottom there. This is the starter tap. If I had a bottom tap, that would be better because I can get the threads in there more. But I don't. I'm sure I do somewhere. I just have to find it. And I don't really feel like doing all that. Even if I do, it's going to be old. And this one's nice and new. So, basically, the start of my threads are fine. But towards the end of my hole, it's not quite all there. But it shouldn't really matter. All right. We've got some junk inside of there. But I'll clean that out. And we should have a nice little part. Okay, cleaned up the uh, base with a file and the top a little bit so I don't have any sharp edges. Well, that screws right into our stud. Alright, according to the part manual, these bolts, all the quarter 20s, are all the same depth, which is kind of important for us. So let's go ahead and measure how far they go. Excuse me, they all use the same size screw. So it goes down 61 64ths of an inch. Let's see if that's the case for all of them. That one's the bottom. That one's at the bottom. So that one's a little narrower, so I'm going to go with that one. And I can see that this one actually can go all the way through. However, this one can't. Is it no biggie? Go ahead and use this hole as our example. So what I'm doing here is using the my tool I just made, along with a little depth gauge. So that's how far in our drill can go. Anything past that, we may drill into the block. Yep, so right there. So it's the base of that tape. The absolute deepest we can go. So as there's not much room here for the drill bit and the tape, I'm going to make the tape go to the very end of my little drill jaws here. So with the fixture on, that's as far as we can go. So I don't really have to worry about the tape stopping me when the drill will do it for me. Let's thread that in. Let's see how this works. Now keep in mind, one of the problems here is if you were doing this by hand, it's good luck keeping it centered. But I don't think this should be an issue. I think we just drill now. And that is not easy. It's looking pretty good so far. But that that is the center. That that's working quite well. Now there's some little muckets inside of there. Get that out. But yeah, that is. That looks good. But I've just broken through the bolt. Every now and then I would stop and clean out the chips, and that's what this little pile is up here. And you it was pretty easy to feel it when it hit the end of the bolt because it just kind of went in a little bit and then stopped. That's when I figured. The bolt stopped, there was a little bit of space, and then the aluminum block, so I stopped drilling. So we now have a 764 hole in the center all the way through that bolt. Good times, eh? So now we need to switch it over to a number 5 drill bit and drill that thing out entirely. When this happens, I'm sure this top end is just going to deteriorate or fall apart, which is which is fine. You'll see why in a second. I have a number 5 in my drill. Uh, I don't know if this part's going to work, but we'll see in a sec. So it's just kind of removing the bolt, although not quite all of it. To see the walls are so thin on the bolt as it goes, they just kind of deteriorate away, which is fine because it's really kind of what I wanted. Because now, let's get another piece of tape. So I have the drill bit in, as far as it'll go. So this is my new stopping point. 
put a piece of tape on it. So that's how far in the hole goes. It's a little, a little less than that, but good enough. So I'm going to use that stop on my bigger hole, minus just a hair. And that is how far we go until we stop on our larger bit. Alright, our hole is now out. Now there's just a little bit of thread left or old bolt. I think the tap will clear it out. You probably go in there with a punch and try it. Let me, let me try that first. It's actually a little pick. Might be able to get some of the threads out. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty in there still. But there is still some steel. So we just have the bit of threads left inside the bolt hole. Let's get a tap. All right, I have my core 20 starter tap, which should grab some threads and just pull out that steel. Watch how easily this is going in. And you can see the steel chunks coming out. Seems like it's working fine. So that works pretty well, I'd say, considering we're using a hand drill, but even not considering we're using a hand drill. The screw is straight, it threads in, it holds tightly, I really, it worked fine. Um, now let's talk about the problems. My little fixture I made, wherever it went. The hole, obviously, is probably straight through, probably no issues there. The issues are this isn't quite flat, it's on a, it's on a, you know, a slight little angle, so if, you know, that's flat, it's like that. You can kinda make it out, I think. You can kind of see it kind of rises up. And, well, that's one issue. The other issue is, as it's drilling, you know, the drill bit's running through this hole, it's kind of filing out the outsides, so it's no longer perfectly, uh, I don't know, round or... It's just not perfectly straight anymore. You could probably get one or two uses out of it reliably, but anything past that, yeah, you got to make another one. Or you go to a bigger hole. Now, there is a problem with this bolt, and that is that it is slightly bent that way. So, ideally, we would thread this in here, maybe tap it over with a hammer or something, and thread it in until it's nice and flat up against the block here. The problem is, this isn't flat, so we need to figure out something else. So, plan B is use a little quarter 20 collar, because chances are that, that is nice and flat. And then, instead of using, well, obviously a hole in it, we don't have that option, we're going to use a, a drill guide that should prevent the drill bit from kind of rounding out the outside of the holes. And this should fit inside of there, and it should work pretty well. Let's, let's go try see how it goes. Okay, I've cleaned off the gasket right around the screw. And we can see we are just a little bit off. I'd say that's pretty straight. Okay, drill guide is installed. Let's see how this goes. Okay, I don't know why it looks so dirty in the camera here. It looks kind of, everything's kind of gray and a little blurry. I don't know if that's the camera, the angle, or what we're looking at. Oh well, doesn't matter. So I have gotten the drill bit all the way through the hole. It bottoms out. 
and that matches the depth in the other ones. Now it worked much, much better than the aluminum. Um, as you rotate it, it kind of locked itself on a little bit, which isn't really an issue, but when you want to take it off, you got to use the wrench. The reason why that's annoying is because the excavating the chips doesn't really happen. You need to take it off every now and then, give it a couple of taps, and that's when you get the pile of chips here from the, uh, from, you know, the screw we're drilling out. So that's what all of this is. But either way, we have a hole centered straight all the way through that bolt now. See what I mean? It looks pretty good. Now, rather than going straight in with the number five like I did in the other hole, I think I'm gonna work my way up, see how that goes. It's kind of an experiment at this point. So at this point, the walls of that are so thin, it's not even funny. Um, I could probably get some pliers and try to back it out because most of the threads are gone. It's still in there. Now, in conclusion, is it perfect? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a machinist. But what I do know is I can get bolts in there now, and I couldn't before. So, considering we're using hand tools and, you know, masking tape, I'd say that's pretty good. You know, that, that is viable. That will work. You know, this can be made with whatever you got around the garage. This will last a little bit longer, but you're going to pay 12 bucks for that little drill bushing. Now, in fairness... There are, there are different aspects of this that weren't considered when I started this because, you know, I was just, you know, proof of concept kind of video. I shouldn't have used the standard clockwise rotating drill bits. I should have used counter rotating drill bits because should one of those drill bits have grabbed the, uh, a thread, it would have pulled the screw out for me. So there is, there is that. That should have happened. You can use your own best judgment on it if you want to go that approach or the way I did it. The other thing that should be considered is those threads are kind of questionable at best. Ideally, what you would probably do is drill it out to next size and use one of the Healy coils to repair the threads into that hole. If you did that, I'm sure it, it'd be perfect. It may not be perfect, but it's as good as you're getting with hand tools, I think. So if you've got a better idea, please let me know below. Keep in mind, I don't have a mill. But let me know what you think anyway. All right, everybody. See you next time.